Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. By now you all probably heard about the drifting issue with load cell brake pedals when using the elastomers. So in this video I'll show you how does it manifest in real life and how I fixed it on my SimMagic P1000 pedals. As you can see, when I push the brake pedal it only holds the desired level for a fraction of a second and then gradually goes down even though I keep my foot in a fixed position. Now, you might claim that this is because I simply am unable to hold a constant pressure, but when I switch to whole sensor angle position tracking, it barely moves, so for me it's a clear indicator of an issue with load cell elastomer combination. Here's an example of how it looks like. I've slowed down the video 5 times and tried to hold the brake force at around 90%. Even though I keep a constant pressure on the brake, after just 0.2 seconds it starts to go down. After 1 second the drop reaches a massive 10% and 1 more second is a further 5% less. In total we're losing around 15% of the brake force within just 2.5 seconds. Just imagine how badly that can affect log long braking zones on some of the tracks. Now let's see how the load cell works when I replaced elastomers with a die spring. As you can see now the reading barely moves at all. And lastly just a quick look on before and after side by side. Fortunately the solution is very simple and quick to apply. So let me show you what I did with my brake. Inside you'll notice I have two elastomers, one on the down, one on top and a die spring in the middle. So yes, I still use the elastomers but just the two of them rather than I think the total is like eight or something. Yeah? So the impact, the negative impact of the elastomers is minimized. In order to make sure the spring doesn't move side by side within the, um, like the enclosure of the brake, um, I have added like 3D printed washers inside here. So you can see the, the pin here goes in between the shaft and the interdiameter of the die spring. And then it also covers it from the top which enables a like a constant spread of the forces across the whole surface of the um, elastomers. So I've been using this for around 10, maybe 15 hours in total. Um, and as you can see, there's no marks on the elastomer. But if you look at the 3D printed piece, you might just notice if I put like a correct angle, you might start notice it. It started like damaging the 3D printed piece. Obviously, this is just plastic. It's not strong enough. Um, and therefore, for like a long-term use, what I would highly recommend is getting like a proper metal uh, M6 washers that you just plug on top of that plastic. So that will kind of strengthen the whole thing and prevent it from being damaged long-term. Obviously, I haven't tested it long enough, so I can't say what the you know how this will behave after several months of heavy use. Um, but I think that with the with the extra metal washers and the um, the hard, preferably red elastomers on both sides, there's really nothing to break here. And on top of that, uh, in my personal opinion, the die spring just feels so much better than the elastomers anyway. Um, the only difficulty is just getting the, the right spring and the, the correct tension that you would need um, for, your, for your use. Now, there's different levels of hardness of these springs um, and they're very cheap. So I would recommend, I can put some links in the description where I got mine in the UK. Um, they're very cheap, you can just buy you know, light, medium, heavy, and just try different combinations and see what works best for you.